All right. Me and Lulu are loading up. And we're fixing to head to New Mexico. Amos, which be Brooks, my little 10 year old grandson, has drawn him a sheep tag. And so we're going to go to New Mexico. They're leaving home right now. They're in the road. And I'm going to meet them in Taos, New Mexico. And hunting on the Rio Grande River over there for a uh, Rocky Mountain Bighorn sheep view. And that's a sea bait. So it's about seven hours from now. Y'all stay tuned, we might have some real footage on this deal for a 10 year old kill. One, two, three, four. Love God, spend time with your family. Be kind, uphold the law. Or a few things you can do to be like Paul. Oh, we ain't got a little fight to it this morning. Go to work, go to church, keep your word, that's all she wrote. Or a few things you can do to be like God. Come on, go. Man, it's like it's the good Lord. If you want to be like Rev, get in the word when you awake. Listen, keep your faith. Read Jesus, right along every step you take. And if you want to be like Hank Parker, he puts God first in everything he does. And we do things the way it was. All right, we out in New Mexico. We waiting on our guide for my little grandson, Brooks. This episode, I'm going out with my dad and Paul, and we're going to New Mexico for my first sheep hunt. AKA Amos Moses is fixing to attempt to try to kill him a big old mama sheep. This kid's the real deal. We call him Amos Moses because by the time he was seven, he had already taken seven alligators. We got a secret weapon with us today. We got Amos Moses, a famous alligator hunter right here. Right in the head. Right in the head. And we're gonna make a one shot clean kill, right? Ooh! There's not gonna be any alligators out there, Amos, where you're going after the sheep. He drew a Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep tag for a youth. So we've got a gun and a bow and we're waiting on the guide to take us out there where them old girls live at, and we're gonna see if we can't get us a big old you. What about it, Amos? That would be excited? I'm excited too. So I'm gonna be the cameraman. If I can't keep up, we're still gonna make the shot today, though, Amos. Yes, sir. All right, let's head out. There's our main. It might be him right there. This is gonna be one of the neatest ones that I've ever been on. And this is a 10 year old kid going on a sheep hunt. And this is a very unique situation to be in. You know, I started hunting uh, as a kid and I loved to hunt with my dad. Of course, we didn't have deer, we didn't have turkey, we had squirrels. And I'd go squirrel hunting with my dad and he taught me a lot about it. So I always admired and, and wanted to do that. And uh, one of my kids came along we started out squirrel hunting. I used to waterfowl hunt all the time. I took my kids waterfowl hunting and then uh, we gravitated into deer hunting and then the turkey hunting. And now the ki the grandkids are all falling into place and uh, hunting and fishing is a family tradition that we have, but it's far more than that. Hunting is a great place to communicate with your kids. The woods is an environment that brings on reality. The Way It Was is brought to you by Hybrid Light, Wise Eye Technology, Conviction Game Calls, I don't really mean to be bragging or nothing like that, but Amos is is a is really a little exceptional ten year old kid. I saw a big old blow up out there, 
so I threw it out there and popped it a few times and my cork went under. You know, Amos is one of those young men, he's just kind of fun to watch and be around. He gets so excited about hunting. Little Amos is, is, is kind of a, a prodigy, I guess you want to say, a phenom. He shoots his, his, his bow and arrow. We're in Kentucky and I'm um, about to shoot bullseye to the Genesis. He wins state championships, shooting bow and arrows. He won one division, he was first place. Two divisions, he was second place out of the nation. There was 4,500 kids there, and he got second place in two events. This kid can hunt. He coon hunts. He does all my shooting at the coon when the dog tree. Amos does the shoot. He has killed animals that grown men will never kill. He's dead serious about his hunting with a rifle. He's dead serious about hunting with his bow and arrow. He's dead serious about, you should see him fish. Mr. Parker, you don't want to fish with him, he may beat you. First place in our top six. He's also champions of the year in the junior fishing league here. Weighing in a 9.13, Brooks Bay and Caleb Corwin. Come on up, guys. <laughs> And him and his his partner, they won the overall championship. I won't be able to sit back and watch Amos perform for a while now. He drew a tag to go on a sheep hunt for a ewe. I've never really done any sheep hunting. I do a lot of whitetail hunting, a little bit of coon hunting, and a lot of fishing. And this is going to be my first time ever going to kill a sheep. Well, you know, this was being a different type hunt. We we did a lot of hunting out of the truck. And go five, two, three, five miles, stop. Go out on the ledges and glass and glass. And Amos had never done anything like this, but he was a, he's good with his binoculars on spotting and stuff. And so we learned a different different way to hunt over there and, and he took right to it. All right, we got a bull and a, and a ewe over there across the mountain. The Rio Grande River goes right through the middle of New Mexico coming out of Colorado and it makes a big gorge and it's a miniature Grand Canyon. And in this gorge, that's where the sheep were. They would stay in this gorge and then come up on top of the flats. It was as flat as it could be on top. And it was a whole lot of glassing and looking and looking. We had some real close encounters, but they was all with ram. We had a U tag and we could not find one. Well, good in. We got a game changer this morning. We got about six inches of snow last night. This is in November, okay, and, and it got cold. This is what you make Christmas cards out of. It snow like we got right now. That made it another challenge because there's more snow than I must have ever seen. The boys are looking hard. They're over here. This hunt has done been a little bit more than what they was expecting. And he hung right in there and did not complain the first bit about how the weather was. We got fresh tracks up here on top. We don't want to go down in the bottom unless we have to. It's just kind of a magnificent place to be hunting at. And all we can see is boy sheep. You know, I've never sheep hunted. Uh, it was always a, a draw and I didn't feel like the odds were very good for me. And, and, and it can be physically demanding, I think. There's 12 sheep over here. 
So I'd kind of just kind of put that to the side. And yet Amos drew this, this sheep tag. But the only problem with us hunting over there, across the river, where all the sheep are at, the tag over there sold for $200,000. And Amos is a little bit short on being able to afford that tag. And this kid can shoot, and he's serious about it, and he was ready to shoot from zero to 500 yards. If he had the shot, that was a dead sheep. Okay, this is our last hunt of the evening. We've been seeing some rams over here, and we're gonna slip over here on this point and see if we can get a one last chance to look at a, a you on our side of the river. Okay, this is day five of our hunt. It's just now shooting time, and Amos is perched, looking, looking. He ain't give up yet. He's been a real trooper on this, this hunt. He loves to hunt. For 10 years old, he just hung in there like a grown man. We'd see seven or eight rams a day. Well, I have us a ram fight him. He bowed up. We're not finding ewes, and we hunted five full days. And not knowing what our shot was going to be, whether it was going to be 20 yards or 500 yards, it was just a roll of the dice. Wherever she showed up, that's what we was going to have to do. Okay, Jeffrey's done found one in the bottom. I was at the truck, and they come back to get me, and the gun, and we got us a U in the bottom of the canyon. We're going to see if we can make this thing happen. This is that last day stuff. So hang on there. We'll be there in a minute. All right, tell us what's going on, Amos. We had a guide, and it was with Compass West. It was one of Chris's men, Jeffrey. And I will say this. You couldn't ask for anybody to do as much as he did to make sure we had a good hunt. Trying to get down on a shelf where we can get a better shot. He's checking it out to make sure we Amos can get down there safely. The helicopter just flew the canyon. We get down to the last day at noon. Jeffrey says, look, I got one other place that's probably 20 miles up. He done found the sheep. He was pretty confident on his shot. I wouldn't have been, but he was. The U is looking back towards us. On the right, looking back towards us. We did a lot of practicing and stuff. We did a, long, a lot of long range shooting and we shot a thousand yards a few times. And we practice a lot. This is going to be my first time shooting something that far. Just turned away. Yes. She a lot of times we went to deer stand, tree stand, but this time we were hunting on, it was the side of a cliff. It was pretty sketchy. She's walking. <laughs> yep. I mainly shoot around 100, 200 yards for whitetail. And Buddy. This was my first shot over 300 yards. It was 480 yards. All right, we're getting ready to go down the mountain. We had a trailhead. We had to go down in the gorge to, to pack him out to go see if Amos, his big old mama's sheep, is laying down there. Well, let Paul get on up there where we can get better video. Good job, man. All right. I'm super pumped for you. Oh. 
day six of a five day hunt. That's the big one. Here. That is the biggest one I've we, we killed. You know, Paul always reminds us so the greatest thing about hunting is handing it down to the next generation, and and uh, that's exactly what he's doing on this hunt. And all we got to do is just go around that mountain, <laughs> way down there, and then back up, way up there. I am so excited. I've never killed a sheep. He came through. And I'm proud of that as, as if I had shot the thing. You have now. Hey, you kill a good one. And a Jim Dandy. Yeah. All right, what does old dad think about all this? I think uh, if we live to be 100, we're going to forget this. No. No. And I'm closer to 100 than y'all are. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I did some unique things. Some people say, well, tell me your greatest moment in the outdoors. Was it when you won the Classic, uh, when, it, when you won the Grand Slam, when you won the Super Bowl? What was the greatest single moment in the outdoors? I took my son, Timmy, when he was seven years old, and uh, we're turkey hunting. And about five minutes before that turkey was gonna fly down, he started pulling on my vest. I thought, oh no, he's gotta go to the bathroom because we don't talk in the turkey woods unless it's an emergency. And I looked down at him and he had little tears in his eyes. And he looked up at me and he said, Daddy, I love you. He was so overwhelmed with the moment and the emotion and what the outdoors meant. That was the greatest moment of my outdoor life. And the bond that he and had, he and I had sitting right there under that tree, watching God's sunrise and that turkey hammer, it was the most spectacular moment. Tears rolling down his face. Well, Amos, we made it back to the top. It took us about five hours to go in there and get the sheep, but we made a recovery, and what a deal. We, we took all four of us, me, Travis, and the guy, and Amos, and that was a, it was snow in the bottom of the canyon and it was a life experience so we have got a complete hunt we have meat bags and what we got there Emma. and now we got a big horn sheet you and folks this is a really big you i'll never forget it he'll never forget it travis but this was probably the neatest hunt i've ever been on in the last 71 years and he is tickled to death with it because it is a really big old you. You know, Amos is on this sheep hunt and uh, the Bible talks a lot about sheep and, and really relating our uh, characteristics of us as followers of Jesus as sheep. Um, but it really comes in a, a conflict to who we are as human beings because just think about this, we love independence. I mean, as a nation, we celebrate uh, our forefathers in 1776 declared our independence from England. Um, we value independence. As parents, we raise our kids up to be independent, to uh, shoot them out into this world, to be, uh, to be productive citizens in society. We value, we celebrate, we love independence. When it comes to our relationship with Jesus, He calls us who are independent to be completely dependent upon Him. There's six verses that are very familiar to us. It's Psalm 23, and David wrote this. Um, David was a shepherd of sheep, and he wrote this. He said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters. He, uh, he, he leads me to green pastures. He uh, leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, I bet you've probably heard that scores of times at funerals that you've gone to. A lot of times preachers will use Psalm 23 to talk about death. 
But there's only a half of a verse, the last verse, that even mentions death when it says, Surely, uh, goodness and mercy follow me, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's really not a psalm about death. It's, it's a psalm about life. How you and I can live this life completely dependent upon our shepherd. He provides for us. He protects us. He goes with us. He wants to be involved in every area and every aspect of your life. Do you have a relationship with the Good Shepherd? Do you know Him? Are you dependent upon Him for every need that you have in this life? Listen, if you're not, we'd love an opportunity to help you claim your dependence upon Jesus. You can type in this website, inthehunt.org, in your smartphone or on your computer, and you can uh, ask questions about how you can become completely dependent upon Jesus for every need and all of your spiritual needs in your life. Hey, thanks again for watching The Way It Was. The Way It Was is brought to you by WTL Ministries. Swacker. Three Rivers Archery Monster Meals